Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, Derek Ramsey here. Um, welcome to day two of SakaiCon and to the welcome session. And this session will be led by Wilma. Uh, one of the first sessions of the morning. So if anyone has trouble with uh, any any chat or connecting with audio features, uh, feel free, go ahead and post it in the chat or the QA session. I will uh, work with you getting that set up and working for you uh, early before the rest of the sessions uh, today. Uh, Wilma? All right, great. Thanks, Derek. Um, so welcome, everybody, and welcome back for day two of our uh, SakaiCon event. Um, once again, I just want to thank our sponsors, Learning Experiences, EDF, Longsight, and Warpwire. Um, so we're very appreciative of them supporting our event and making it possible to give you guys prizes and other cool stuff. So, um, so thank you to all of our sponsors. Um, I do want to announce that the recordings from yesterday are available. So if you missed any of the sessions um, yesterday, if you um, had a, you know, a technical issue or a time conflict and you couldn't make it to some of them, um, if you look on day one in the conference site the, where the link to join session was yesterday, now it's a link to view the recording. So it'll take you to, um, to view that recording on YouTube. Um, and we'll get the sessions from today posted as soon as possible, hopefully this week. Um, if not today, then maybe tomorrow, um, so that you'll be able to catch some of those if you missed the live um, session on, on any of those as well. We also have a few changes to the agenda for day two. Nothing major, but we did, um, we had that evaluation that went out and we actually pay attention to those. <laughs> so we noticed in the emails, that a few folks had said that they wish they had some time for lunch break. And we realized we didn't build one in because we were trying to kind of hit that sweet spot to straddle a bunch of different time zones so we could um, make it you know, acceptable for people on the West Coast, but also over in Europe. Um, so that's always a tough thing to do to cover that many time zones. Um, so we didn't initially put a lunch break in because we were thinking people would just kind of have a lunch and learn sort of thing where they would eat during the showcase. But um, we realized that uh, some people appreciate a little bit of a break as well. So based on that, we decided to shift the timing a little bit for the afternoon. So we built in an extra you know, 20 minutes or so. So with the break in between sessions, you get a 30 minute um, lunch break in between the accessibility session and the new feature showcase. So if you want to grab a bite to eat or just uh, get away from your computer for a minute, please come back. <laughs> we hope we don't lose people during lunch, um, but, uh, but that lunch break is new. And so that shifted the time a little bit for the afternoon sessions. Um, but we realized that the trivia ran a little short. So we, um, we tightened up the time there and I, I shaved off just a little bit of time from the showcase. I think I can get through it all in, in 50 minutes as opposed to an hour. So, um, so that's the updated schedule for today. And um, that is also reflected in the, um, in the conference site where you go and you can view all the sessions and links to join them. So all of that has been updated. Um, so uh, just make a note if you had anything um, scheduled in your, your calendar or you had it written down at a different time somewhere else that you'll wanna update that with those changes. So again, just a recap of tips and reminders from yesterday in case you missed the welcome yesterday. I just wanted to make sure that people know um, about the attendee FAQ page in the site. That's got some additional information about recordings, tips for first time attendees, that sort of thing. Um, we do also have our social wall and you can um, send uh, posts to the social wall from either Twitter or Instagram if you use hashtag SakaiCon22. Um, there's also a web form you can post directly to the social wall. So if you want to put a picture or a comment, um, you don't have to go through your social media account to do it. You can use the web form um, in the site. Um, and then uh, also, again, just as a reminder, we have some sandbox sites that we created for everybody. Uh, so each person should have their own personal sandbox for you to play in. You can try out some of the stuff you've learned um, or just you know, kind of mess around with some of the new tools 
Tri Sakai is running Sakai 22, which is the latest version. So if you're if you have Sakai at your institution, but you're maybe on a different version, you can check out some of the newer features um, that are in the um, current release. And uh, sessions are being recorded uh, and available. As I mentioned, um, yesterday's sessions are already up. Um, there is a random drawing for the evaluation surveys. So please be sure to fill those out if you wanna be entered in the drawing. And um, we do have prizes for trivia. We're gonna be doing um, round two this afternoon, as well as the top high scoring people across both days. So it's gonna be kind of like a cumulative uh, point total for people that participated in the trivia for both days. Um, or maybe one day, if you, you scored like super, super well on one day, you could still be in the running. Um, all right, so I think that is it for our welcome. Um, does anybody have any questions? Uh, put them in the chat, I'm happy to answer. We have a couple extra minutes before our first session starts. Nope, okay. Um, so we've got about a four minute break before our first session. Um, our first session starts at 10 after. So that's going to be, um, oh wait, I didn't, I didn't see there's a couple chat questions. So let's see. Uh, Sanyang, um, you think you're logged in with a different email? Your, your other email has the sandbox. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll see if we can get that sorted for you. Um, and let's see, the watch party says thanks to lunch. So you guys enjoy. I'm not sure what you guys are having for lunch today, but whatever it is, hopefully it's good. <laughs> um, all right, any other questions from folks? All right, so we'll get you fixed up with that site. And I'm gonna go on mute for about th three minutes, but I'm gonna leave this room open because it's the same. Um, Zoom link we're using for uh, the lesson session with uh, Julianne, so she'll be popping in here shortly, and um, and we'll just kind of let the, the there she is she just entered, so um, we'll just let the um, the room kind of keep recording um, to pick up the second session, so we'll um, we'll start in about three minutes. Oh, we have a question about the boot camp. Um, the boot camp was actually rescheduled because the the person that usually does the boot camp had a conflict, um, and he couldn't do it uh, during this time. So we're going to reschedule the boot camp for a later date, probably in the fall, um, maybe October ish. But we haven't settled on an exact date yet. So we will send out an email to anyone who indicated interest. Um, to let them know when the um, the rescheduled date is for the boot camp. Hey, Julianne. If you want to do a quick sound check, we're just kind of in between sessions. Yeah, absolutely. Am I sounding okay? Yep, you sound great. Excellent. Stop sharing so you can uh, begin sharing if you'd like. Can you see my lesson screen? Yep. Perfect. Excellent. Okay, I have 10 after, so if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get started. 
So um, welcome everyone to our first session of the day, which is our lesson in lessons from Julianne Morgan um, from the University of Dayton. And so she's gonna show you lots of great stuff about the lessons tool. Take it away, Julianne. All right, well, thank you everyone for being here. Um, the lessons tool is my absolute favorite thing to talk about with regards to Sakai. And I hope I don't go too crazy about it because I just love, I spend like my entire life in lessons. I have a live stream of me editing lessons pages. It's the most fun live stream you've ever seen. I encourage you to join in sometime. So I have a lot of examples, but I really want to talk to me to you mostly today about like organization with the lessons tool. But before we get started, like for many of you who maybe not know Sakai, what is the lessons tool? So the lessons tool is a um powerful content authoring and instructional design tool instructors use the lessons tool as a central hub for their course activities their resources and the interactions they're going to have with students throughout their course but if you're like me then those sound like nice words what do they really mean show me some examples um over my over the years of delivering countless tutorials about lessons like the one thing that i take away from every single tutorial is they want to see oodles and oodles and oodles of examples. So I can provide today. Um, you can see different examples of kinds of different layouts of modules, of topics, of content, of activities. Um, so I hope to show you a lot of these different examples throughout our session today. It can be configured to do exactly whatever an instructor needs, whatever they, however they plan to deliver their course consistently and cleanly. So my examples today will come primarily from the University of Dayton's instance of Sakai. Um, one of my favorite things about Sakai is that it's open source, and that means that we get to listen to our faculty and our students and develop new features based on what they tell us they need. So if you're already familiar with Sakai, you may see some things that look slightly different. Also, we just did a release this morning, and my colors throughout my, <laughs> I wasn't expecting all my colors to go wonky. I think they're all okay now. I went through everything and edited them, but that's what we do. We're just constantly changing things and improving things. Not just bad change, good change. We have a whole new like feature that just came out this today for students. That's going to be awesome. Um, so over the year, we've really pushed a certain message to our students or to our faculty hard that the lessons tool should be used as more than just a dumping ground for your resources. Like this is an example that I saw all too often in our lessons tool for many, 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 many years at UD, which is instructors would just like upload every single file in their course onto their lessons page. And essentially it's an exact replica of their resources tool, but somehow with less organization, which is ironic because you can organize the lessons tools content way more easily than you can organize the resources tools. Resources tools, your dumping ground, not lessons. Don't, this is like, it just makes me sad when this happens, but I'm also not trying to push anyone to do anything that is going to make more work for them except for you need to make it less work for your students. So if I'm a student in this course, I have no way of knowing where my files are, like chapter, where's my chapter one lecture notes? Where are those at? I have to scroll through this list and do a control F to find them if I, if I even know how to, if the, if the file's even titled properly. So I don't want anyone to ever have to do more work, but I do want them to at least do some organization um, set up so that your students can at least find like the chapter one notes. Um, which version of Sakai are we using now? That's a very good question. Let me actually, uh, I think it's, we just released, so it's 2020 dot, 21.3 is what we're on. And that might, the dot three might be our own versioning. I'm not the developer, so I know we're on 21. We're not on 22 yet. I think that's coming in the, in the fall. Um, so here's what here's a better example of like just a little bit this is not the one a little bit more organization for your course so you're taking your resources and you're at least putting them in weekly folders or maybe even like a weekly task list so you just have the the links to your articles still but you're at least putting them on a weekly basis i think that's kind of the easiest way to approach organization of a course is thinking about your course in terms of the schedule but there's so many different ways you can think about it but Ultimately, this is the only agenda I'm ever kind of trying to push for students is, or for instructors, it's just add a little bit of organization. And it could be a true challenge because there are so many ways to organize the course. So there's like by date, by topic, by unit, by chapter, by some combination of the above. Sometimes I have instructors tell me like, how can I just like develop my course by the way I'm feeling about the class that week? And I'm like, okay, that's 
we're going to need to teach you some buttons if you're going to be doing like a weekly feeling of the course. Um, and then I kind of just say like, let's use the commons tool. So we'll just like post things in the commons tool so you can just feel it out. And that's fine. You know, I'm here. I'm here for you and what you need. But in terms of like getting the files to students, if they're special, if they're going to be tested on those resources, then we need to have some organization. My buttons are not working as nicely as I hoped today. So let me pop into an actual example from our actual instances of of Isidore. So this first example of, of sorry of Sakai, we call it Isidore at UD. It's a it's a saint from the university. Um, from the Catholic Church, we're a Catholic university. So this first example is what I like to call just the basics. This course has one lessons page um, for each week of the semester. Uh, this is actually what we call our template course. This is um, a, a template that we actually build every semester so any instructor can copy it. This is my our template from last spring. We do have one for fall that I just didn't pull in, um, but it's got you know a week, for every or a page for every week of the course, and then we have dates on each page. Their date release. I also took off the date releases on a few of these pages. Um, and then an instructor, all they need to do is once they're in there, is write an overview of their course. This is probably a little more advanced than what anybody at our university actually does, but you know, write a teaser for what's going to be happening that week, and then most importantly, write the task the students are supposed to be accomplishing that week. And then down here in the resources section upload every single file they're going to need to accomplish those tasks, the videos they'll need, and any activities they're supposed to accomplish, um, links to assignments, and just anything that all the all the things that it's harder to actually build into text files. So this is all just text right here, but here are like links. And for our instructors, um, sometimes it's hard for them to understand exactly like how to build a link into this, this content or how to separate task three from task four so you can put a link to an assignment so this is like the most straightforward easiest way to to approach a course and we tell everyone just like for all students all the resources you're going to need are going to be down here for this week then we also have a checklist that the students can use to track their progress this is a fantastic feature that we've been having just nothing but positive feedback from our students so long as it's used properly i've seen some checklists like read and then that checklist watch video i'm like that's not helpful we need to like we need to say a few more words in the checklist about what they're what they're actually supposed to be doing. Um, the another nice feature about the checklist we talked about yesterday during one of the sessions is that actually students can um, uh, we can set it up so that a student can't check off this item. So in this example, like I cannot check off this item, it will get checked off for me automatically when I submit a quiz. So um, once I submit this quiz, it will be checked off. Basically, the way I've done that is I've made this quiz down here a required item and once they submit it, it will get checked off for them. And that um, is nice for, for you to know that students are actually, you know, accomplishing the main goals of the course of that week. For some. Okay, so if I um, want to take this and improve it just slightly, just, uh, just this example essentially, and improve it just a little bit, one thing I could do is use the sections feature of Sakai to split all these tasks into their own individual sections that are collapsible. And you've seen this feature being used in the conference site that Wilma set up and it looks awesome. So let me show you what this looks like in uh, an example course over here. Let me pop in here. So now I've taken all those tasks that I had listed out in the uh, more basic version of lessons and I've split them into these expandable and collapsible sections. And this really helps the student because the content is a little bit more, um, it's, not, it's less overwhelming when the first student first gets to the page, they're not seeing all their tasks and everything they have to do for that week. They can actually separate it out and take things step by step. It also allows them to um, tie, remember how the resources were kind of separated down um, in, in a different section. Now my resources for each activity, for each task are kind of tied in with this, tied into this, page into this expandable section. So I have to watch my video. My video is right here. I need to complete this quick write. My quick write is right here. I need to watch another video here. Here's the links I need to do them. I need to submit my quiz. Here's a here's a link to my quiz. So that's what I mean when I say that it's a central hub for every single activity. All these activities are kind of stored in these left-hand tool menu items, but they're driven through lessons. So the student doesn't have to go digging around all these other tools, trying to find the stuff that they need to accomplish their work. It's all driven from lessons. Um, another 
you know, some things I've also done in this uh, particular instance of the course is I've used some additional features available from Sakai. So this important dates um, box here, for example, is a, a template that instructors can use with just one click of the button. And this is available in um, base Sakai now. Let me pull up an example from the instructor's point of view of how to use those templates. Let me just drag over my instructor side. So if I want to add a, an important dates box, I could just add a text object. So if I want to add a text object right above this one, I'll click on add text video, or I think it's called add text in base Sakai. Again, sorry, we have some different wording. Um, but then I just click on the templates button, and this pulls up a whole list of different templates that you know, make this stand out to your students a little bit more. I always caution people, be use them sparingly, use them thoughtfully. Don't just go nuts with all the different templates. Um, the one that I really love that's specific to University of Dayton, I'm just going to plug because I'm I'm so proud of this one, is we are guided by this Marianist mission and these charisms. So I love being able to tie course content to our Marianist mission. So I, I can't write your content for you for, in this template, but we do have like we tell them to reach out to us and we'll help you tie your court your content to the temp to Marianist principles. Um, the important dates one is up somewhere in here. This one is the important date. So nice red box that they can just sub in their own information. One click of a button. It's so easy to do. I did see a couple uh, questions here. Dave Elon asking, is the collapsible function accessible by keyboard? I think it is, but I would have to double check on that. But we tend to be pretty careful about accessibility, but I would double check. Um, Okay, so that's a good to note that they've avoided using the collapsible function because it was not accessible. Um, good to know. Uh, I'll bring that up with our dev team and see if and, and, and follow up with you on that. I saw another question about does the template include a blank starting overview checklist tasks and resources section in the weekly lessons page and yes it does great question i'll just pop back over. Um, from the students well i'll just go into the, our existing fall template we're going to see it live in action here. Uh, fall 2022 template. And so if I go into my week one here, I can have a blank overview with like, a, with it. one problem we do have is people don't stub in their own information. So if we see this block of text just kind of existing throughout our instance of Sakai, which is really fun for us. Um, and then we have the task list, we have the resources section, we have the checklist. We did take out the important dates um, about two semesters ago just because we were getting so many complaints of students saying that their dates were from the past semester because instructors weren't updating those dates so that is unfortunate but we also didn't want to confuse students so we removed that from this base template we tend to recommend using it still if you're the kind of instructor who's on top of their game and updating things every semester but so many instructors are not so we just removed it um then we also have an example of how it should look so folks have something to go off of but that's a great question Okay, so let me pop back into um, my student view here. I was going to also show that I really love the, there's so many interactive capabilities that you can do within lessons, but the one that I rely on the most is called the questions tool. And it's really just a simple way to ask a multiple choice question or a survey kind of question, short answer kind of question. Um, so nice, just like, a, it's just a little extra spice you can add to your course. What's the most important move in the solar system? You can use that as a way to drive the conversation for the next week, because lots of people have different opinions on this. Well, at least in the space world, there's lots of different opinions on this question. So students type in their answer and they submit it. And um, you can also have that be graded so that if they complete the activity, it'll be graded. It could also be like a, a survey style question. So after they submit, they can see the poll, the like the poll results from the entire class. So you could make this more fun and debatable, like if you want to do something space related, you know, is Pluto really a pl planet or is it really a dwarf moon? And that could really just spur some really fun conversation. So this is, I'm showing you now um, on the main page of this version of this course. Um, I took that base template, which is like week one, week two, week three, week four. And now I've also added it just to be a little bit more um, telling to students for what's coming up that week is I've added the topics title to the pages so that my foundation. So like if I expand this list, for instance, I don't know what's happening in week four. I know what week four is in this semester, but I have to remember if I'm looking for that thing that we talked about with with. Uh, 
globule clusters. Where is that at in the course? I don't know. I would have to click through a bunch of courses. I'm like, I think it was around Thanksgiving. So somewhere, somewhere in here. But now I've added some just basic titling to the pages. It's so easy to do. Um, at UD, we have a bulk um, editor for our lessons pages. So we can quickly edit all these names. Um, I'm not sure if that's in basic high or not, but we can edit all these names and titles in on one page and not have to click on the edit button for each page. Uh, so it's super easy to do that. And that means that when the student also expands this left hand column, they can hop right to there and they don't have they can kind of skip past this landing page, even though I like this landing page, I think it looks really pretty. So sometimes, though, there are reasons why you want to not have your I know this was came up in a session yesterday as well as like, well, should you have your lessons expand here on the left or should you say that because that's customizable, you can also say that you don't want to have them expanded. So I think I do have another example here where we do not have them uh, expanded. Yes, so here is a page where I'm driving my course content out of my units page. So I do not have them expanded because I want them to keep coming back to this page. And that's totally fine. Students are okay with that just so long as they know exactly where their content is located. This is also a page that is um, organized by units. So for some instructors, being restricted to dates can be a little bit too limiting and confining. Like what if this topic takes longer? So you'll see that there are still dates on this page, but primarily this course is being driven by the content of the course. They're driven by these modules so that if if this does take longer than June 16th, we can edit that date and we can edit these few dates and it will only take a few minutes to do that so that we can spend more time on sampling if we need to. Like it's just we're not going to we're not going to let the, the calendar drive us. We're going to make sure that the students are understanding what they need to in order to maybe we'll have to drop some things at the end of the semester, but still we're making sure that we're we're paying attention to what the students actually need in terms of their learning. So that's another way you can organize your course that's different than that weekly basis. Uh, you can also do kind of a combination. So this is another style of course. Um, if I go back to the main page here, you'll notice again that this is not an expandable collapsible like I can't just jump to module five from this but that's okay because i need these students to be paying attention to this column for each unit so i have four units throughout this course and i have modules within each unit that's still kind of date driven but i need these students to be coming back to see this this project there's a project for each unit and i need them to constantly be reminded of that like oh i remember that i have to do this explanatory presentation by the end of the unit so that these unit projects are kind of like staying on pace with you as the student navigates the course. And, you know, in each module, we are driving the students to that page as well. So as part of their task details, um, we tell them go to the introduction presentation page and that will take them right there. Here, by the way, is also an example of the um, survey style question that you can add. So this is again, this is called the questions tool and you just it's you just click on add content, add question, and uh, you type in your question and the answers. Let's answer this for, <laughs> I have high communication anxiety, so I'm gonna go ahead and submit that answer. I don't have um, um, other students in this course. This is just a demo course, but I could so say, show me the poll answers and probably I'm guessing there would be many people in this because this course is for first year, so probably lots of communication anxiety if I just had to guess. Uh, let me, uh, answer this question here. So are those pages duplicate pages or the same pages with different titles? If we're referring to this, which I think we are, this is the same page, the shared page with slightly different titles, because I think this is introduction presentation details. And if I go back to the main modules page, yes. So it's a shared page, which is a nice feature of Sakai. I can share this page across different units. Um, the one thing that people have to remember when you're doing a shared page is that if you change it in one spot, it does change it in the rest of the spots. So that's a really nice feature. I like to be able to do that. I don't want to go to 15 different pages to make the same updates, but it is something that people can forget that it is a shared page. Because <laughs> if you start adding something that's specific to the sequencing that you have it in, then you might find that you've put in something that's for week one, but now it's in week five as well, that kind of thing, because you've shared that page in different spots. Um, might be simple, but how do you put your quiz info and question in the same side-by-side -side box? Quiz info and link on the left. I'm trying to remember that. Quiz info and question info. Quiz info and question info. I'm trying to remember why I talked about that. Uh, Jennifer, are you on? Can you unmute yourself and, and ask that question? I don't know if panel, I don't know if participants can answer. Yay. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, I can't. It was one of the first ones you showed at the bottom. It was one box all the way across and it had like text and a link to a quiz. And then on the right, it had one of those question pieces. And I was just curious how you were able to get two in the same widget there, is right it, there. Is it there? Yep. Okay, the great question. Let me pull over the instructor side of this. Let me unfull screen here for a second. So that is in this course, it's basically just using two columns and a section header. So it's one section with two columns inside of it. Um, let me pull it up here because sometimes it's useful to see. I've been showing the student view because it it's a little bit cleaner looking. But yeah, so this is one section across the top. And then this is a link to the quiz. And then this is a question on the right. So this is just another column. If I wanted to add another column here, I'd click on this plus icon and say add column break. And then I, I like to take off the borders here. And then in terms of adding that quiz, I just added um, I clicked on this plus icon and I said, oh boy, uh, uh, link to tester quiz. And then I pulled in the quiz I was looking for and then it became a link. Is that, does that answer your question? That should be available in basic high. Yes, it does. It's just, I, I guess we haven't done a lot with the layout. So, but I like that how you had two things that go together. So thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks. That was a great question. Thanks for asking that. Um, yeah, the layouts, so that is, so great segue, thank you. The layouts are, because you can do so much with them, there can be, there's a little bit of a learning curve to them. Like I can pop my way around layouts all day long, but there is a bit of a curve. I think we maybe added this to basic high, this add layout button, I guess I can look right here. Yeah, in, in our very own long site site, there's this add layout button. So if you wanted to, add, I'm not going to, Wilma, I know you're like, don't touch it. I'm not gonna press any buttons. Um, but you could add a, this gives you like a, a template to get started or a wizard to add a layout to your course. So um, you can give it, you know, task five, so and so forth, change, put a color on it. You can have a two column layout. You can have a, a two column layout where the left hand side's double width. Um, you can choose to make them uh, collapsible or not collapsible at this point. Um, you can do three columns if you wanted to. I'm going to cancel out that. But then I also was going to show we can do those page layouts too. So that's more for those tasks. That's a layout for tasks. Um, if you want to do a, if I go to the base page here, let me click on this again. So if I wanted to add a layout that's like this, like I call this the exterior page of lessons. It's more like the module landing page. I also have the ability to do these page layouts. So I have a sub page listing and it kind of gives you this preview of what that looks like. So that's week one, week two, week three, week four. You could also do, um, you, oh, sorry. So you can also do the interior layout. So this is a, a template where you can just add, the, it's exactly what I showed at the beginning. It's like the overview text. Um, you can't really, oh, click for preview image. It's, it adds exactly this to your page. You can also then do interior layout with task sections. And here's the preview image where you have overview and you have your classical sections. Now I would just say, I would not leave your tasks as this um, as no color because I I think with these these borders here it can look a little bit like it just blends right in. So I do always recommend making your section header some color. I I, I just always recommend doing that. But we didn't add that into the ability to um, when when you're going through this wizard. Another cool thing is that you can set how many tasks you want. So I want ten tasks, and I can set my color. Oh, I guess we did add it. And gosh, we did more than I thought. Um, and they, you can set them to be collapsible and you can set them to start close. So it's a real fast way, I believe is in basic high. I'm hoping that we did add that as well. Yay. So it's all in basic high. You can just, you know, this is such an easy way, easy way in for, for people to be able to get started with lessons. Cause it is kind of challenging at first to know where all these buttons are and what they, what happens and where they go. Um, I wanted to, I had, I think maybe one more example that I wanted to show and this is more of a cautionary tale um, because what I like to say is with great power of being able to do all the things in Sakai comes also great responsibility. And I love this course. I helped build this course, but at some point we went a little bit, I love colors. I do like my colors in my courses, but at this some point we went a little bit awry with the colors. And one thing I do see is people using every single color in this vast library of colors for every section. And I would say, try not to do that. I would say, 
uh, be consistent and intentional with your coloring selections. So if you're going to be using different colors, they're, they're going to correspond to different things. Like I think for our, our conference today, our general sessions were in blue and then our, um, you know, our trivia was in yellow. So there's some kind of visual indicator as to why these things look different. Maybe you're not intentionally picking that up as the consumer or the navigator of that, of that course, but you're also not going but there's some kind of subconscious message that your your eye is probably picking up, even if you're not like actually thinking about it. But don't just willy nilly just go through all the colors just because you want it to look like a rainbow, because that's it's very distracting and it's not great for accessibility purposes either, um, both from a visual aspect and from a cognitive aspect. So at that point, I'm going to stop and ask for any other questions that folks have, and I'm happy to um, show more examples because I can literally again talk about this forever. Okay, so Dave Elon says, do not make colors mean certain things from a learner's perspective for those who may be unable to discern color, right? So if you're going to have like your section headers for my online class, I actually have an example of this where I'm working on right now. Um, so in this course, I'm trying to differentiate between um, our online modules and our in-person modules this is more of a blended course. So I have even said here, and and I do need to add more in terms of accessibility because students who cannot discern between blue and red, they would not be able to tell. So that has been a no, this course is not live yet. It's something I'm still working through. Um, but I've said like our red things are in, in person, our blue things are online. Um, but I do also need to add a tag that says like next to each thing, like this is an online portion. So there's both a like a cue for people who are able to discern the colors and then also a cue for people who can't so that it can still determine whether they're supposed to meet in person that day or not. Added iconography could insist of color too. That's a great point. I could put like a little, like a little person icon or a classroom icon. I could do a little computer for the online. Live streaming lessons. <laughs> sure, I will, uh, yeah, so you can follow my YouTube channel. Like, can't remember what it is off the top of my head. I don't have a, I'm not fancy enough for a custom URL, but um, I will post that in our, our, our conversations on Tricycai. I think we have a conversation spit, or I can, I'll just post it underneath uh, my, I'll post it underneath here, but be warned, it's, it's boring. <laughs> so just be, it's not fun. You're just going to hear me talk. It's, it's unpleasant, but I'll, you'll learn some things probably. Okay, so please also, uh, yeah, so if anyone else has questions, you can also speak up as well, and I'm hoping I'm not missing anything. Yeah, if you want to unmute, raise your hand and I can unmute you. Okay, so I did see I missed a question. Um, invoked iconography next to our headers via CSS or direct call of the font awesome asset. So I think that question is about um, if I'm just, uh, I can't remember which I could do, and I could pop in here. So in, I think it's about putting an icon in front of my task here. We've done something like that, but not with our task sections, I don't think. Um, we do, so one other powerful feature of uh, Sakai is that you can upload custom CSS for a page. And I actually had that pulled up because for people who don't know, this came up the other day. Um, CSS is called, it's cascading styling sheets, and it's just a way to restyle certain elements of a page. So this is an example of a CSS page. Um, I was, I think it's the CSS on, uh, this this course is what it is. So in my modules here, this is actually custom CSS. This break in between the two columns in the section header that is actually custom CSS to make it look like this is. Um, I don't like the instructor view here, but what is statistics? Descriptive statistics. So that's custom CSS that we we actually built. We don't use it very often. We try not to so that folks can't. Um, because we don't want to demonstrate or provide things that folks can't update on their own. And most instructors aren't really, they're not, they're not interested in learning how to update their CSS. We have a few, but it's rare. Uh, live conferencing in version 2022. Yes, Wilma, thank you for answering that. CSS per lesson within a course only or can be applied across the entire, you can apply it across the entire system. Like I think our skin is CSS. 
certainly our colors like these this section header color that is something that's determined by some css in the background um these button colors are determined i will show you so that can be applied system wide but you do need the developer or the administrator at university to do that. I have never done that. That sounds scary to me. I'm always just working within my lessons pages. One, um, you know, I also have played with the buttons a lot in my in the past. So I made these buttons where I had iconography in front of the button. That was fun to do, but also I'm not a coder, so it was hard for me to do this. But it was it was nice to do. It's like I really liked adding the iconography in front of the buttons. <laughs> We are out of time, unfortunately, um, but this was a great session. Um, thank you so much, Julianne, for sharing all those wonderful tips and examples. And I know she's put uh, a couple of resources out there for you already in the site. Um, and we'll all get to like get some popcorn and watch, watch your YouTube channel this weekend. <laughs> I might go live so. this weekend. I might choose, I might tweet it from my personal Twitter because I kind of got like in trouble for tweeting about it on our like fact on our faculty Twitter. So I'll, I'll put my personal Twitter up too, but be warned, it's lots of K-pop more than it is Sakai stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, thank you again. And if you guys have additional questions for Julianne that you didn't get to ask, um, please feel free to use the conversations in the site to ask those questions there. Um, so we'll have about a 10 minute break and then we will be back for Chris Knapp's accessibility session. So those of you who had those accessibility questions about collapsible um, sections, he's the person to ask. So um, hopefully we'll see you back in about 10 minutes and um, enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.